With its former CEO, a known vocal skeptic of plug-in cars who once famously begged customers not to buy the Fiat 500e because it lost the company thousands of dollars every time it was sold, Fiat Chrysler, FCA, hasn't historically been all that keen on electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles. Sure, the limited range, limited availability Fiat 500e is still in production and available in compliance car markets around the world, and it now has a plug-in sibling in the form of the Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivan. But FCA still hasn't really done much in the way of committing to plug-ins yet. Other, that is, than promise that the next generation Fiat 500e will be produced in Europe, along with a plug-in hybrid version of the Jeep Renegade, and promise, very vaguely, that there are more electrified Jeep models on the way. Earlier this week, the company cemented those promises just a little with a 4.5 billion US dollar investment across five of its Michigan production facilities and a commitment to build an entirely new assembly plant in Detroit. The reason to bring a new series of models to market in the next few years, including, as its press release stated, some new electrified Jeeps. In total, the investment will create nearly 6,500 jobs, massively contributing to the local economy of the region. But how serious is FCA about these promises, and what will it really translate to in the real world? First, let's deal with some basic facts here. While the automaker did talk about bringing electrified Jeep models to market in its headline announcing the investment, stating that we'll see new electrified Jeep products, including at least for plug-in hybrids and, quote, the flexibility to produce fully battery electric vehicles, the investment isn't completely just for electric and electrified vehicles. Read the press release beyond the headline and you'll see that there is an investment into non-electrified cars too. For example, FCA says one of the reasons to expand its facilities is to meet increasing demand for its SUVs and pickup trucks. FCA, like many other automakers, has seen a real growth in demand for SUVs and pickup trucks in recent years, driven by reduced fuel costs in the US, as well as a global shift away from sedans and hatchbacks towards larger, heavier vehicles. The investment also covers the moving of FCA's engine production facility at Mack Avenue Engine Complex to Dundee Engine Plant, replacing engine production at Mack Avenue, that's Mack 1 and the currently idle Mack 2 facility, with production of the next generation Jeep Grand Cherokee, a new three-row full-size Jeep SUV, and some yet unnamed plug-in hybrid models. The new three-row full-size SUV, likely to be called the Jeep Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer, aims to be an attempt by FCA to produce what it calls a white space segment that offers significant margin opportunities. In other words, make a car for a segment where it believes it can make lots of money. Like other automakers then, FCA is looking to make money on full-size gas-guzzling SUVs, presumably with a goal of helping it develop a range of more efficient plug-in hybrids and, as it has suggested for the future, an all-electric model or two, but sometime in the future. If you're watching this right now and you're exclaiming that FCA doesn't seem all that serious about plug-in models, I would totally understand. But while much of this investment announced does appear to be focused on non-plug-in models, it's worth noting too that it also says three of the sites being invested in will produce plug-in hybrid versions of their respective Jeep models. Stopping short, however, of committing to building fully electric models and instead suggesting that there will be the flexibility to build electric versions in the future, presumably as market demands it. It's commendable that FCA is now looking to expand its plug-in hybrid lineup, especially in a market segment, where large SUVs and pickup trucks seem very few plugs. However, the use of electrified in FCA's statement, rather than just electric, makes the company look only mildly interested in plug-in vehicles moving forward, especially when other automakers are actively looking at building numerous electric vehicles in the coming few years. At this point, many watching this video will have made their mind up completely that FCA shouldn't be given any more time or coverage. And to that, I'd remind them that this channel isn't about picking winners or sides. It's only about reporting the news and trying to add context. Personally, I am very disappointed at FCA, but if these four expected plug-in hybrid models offer moderate electric range for a plug-in hybrid, I'd hope for 50 miles a minimum, allowing for zero emission daily commuting for the average consumer, and they help reduce overall gasoline consumption, 
then it is a step in the right direction, even if it's a small one, especially in a market segment where plug-in models are underrepresented. Sure, I'd rather FCA produce all electric Jeeps and pickups, and I hope that happens sooner rather than later, especially with the market moving towards plug-ins. It will ultimately reward the companies that produce what consumers want, or at least I hope that's what consumers want. If you're watching this, I suspect that you also want that to, for plugins to replace internal combustion engines completely. Companies that don't share that vision will find out one way or another that their plans will have to change or their company's future is put in jeopardy. That's it. Thanks for joining me. Let's see you next time.